the definition of pluralism is respecting the otherness of others. That is, you are who you are, I am who I am. This is how God has made each one of us. In fact, in, in Surah Hujura, he says, I have deliberately created you into many tribes and many communities and many religions because he acknowledges that. And then he says, because of the uniqueness I am endowing each one of you, there is going to be conflicts. How do we resolve the conflicts? He says, respect the otherness of others. He says, God says in the Quran, the best ones among you are those who learn about each other. When we learn about the other, conflicts fade and solutions emerge. Let me give you an example of how he practiced and how we can practice in our lives. When the Hudaybiyah Peace Treaty, that is the first treaty he made, is a 10 years peace treaty. I'm not going to the details of the treaty, but let's go to the bottom line of the treaty. The Quraysh tribe and Prophet's side agreed to certain peace terms between both sides. They agreed the terms, okay, this is what, we are going to go with it. So that was put in writing, and the paper or leather, whatever that was, instrument at that time, was placed in front. Prophet was ready to sign. The other side, he said, no, I'm not signing this. I agree with the terms listed here, but I don't agree with the signatory. His name was fine, but when it came to the name of Prophet, it said Muhammadur Rasulullah, that is Prophet of God. The other man said, I don't accept that. I don't accept you as Prophet of God. I don't know that. And at that time, I just want you to imagine, it may never have happened. Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Usman, supposedly very strong people, could have pulled their sword and said, nonsense, he is the prophet of God, what are you talking about it? We're going to slay you. But prophet held them back. Guess what he said? They, they don't know I am prophet. You know I am prophet, but they don't know. I'm not agreeing with them, but I'm accepting that they don't know I am prophet. He acknowledged that they are different than himself. That acknowledgement is respecting the otherness of others. Then of course, he changed his name at the signature. From Muhammadur Rasulullah, he switched to Muhammad bin Abdullah, that is Muhammad son of Abdullah. And that was acceptable to the other party because he knew him as son of Abdullah, not as Rasulullah. This is a very important distinction in how the world is going to treat each other. What the other people say, we have to, acknowledging doesn't mean you're agreeing with them. You're acknowledging that this is what the other person believes. And this conflict comes right now. I wanted to go, I, I couldn't make it because of my health. I wanted to go to the Trump's inauguration. A few of my Muslim friends call me names. I don't have to agree with Trump. I have written more things that are anti-Trump than anybody else. Over 15 articles condemning everything he has said policy-wise, but yet he's our president. He's elected as president. If I don't work with him, not that I'm going to, but if we don't work with the people who are opposed to us, who will? If we don't talk to a person, how will we change? In a given family, in your personal families, if two sisters or two brothers are not talking with each other, they will not listen to anybody. But there is a person, a grandfather, grandmother, even though one of them may take side with the other, but they are still willing to listen to. So, as individuals, we need to accept the otherness of Trump. We don't have to agree with him, but he is the president. Imagine, President Obama was there. All five, even uh, former candidate president, uh, not candidate, 
Dole was there. Dole had said so many bad things about Trump, but yet he was willing to work with him. If Obama, Bush, Clinton, Carter said we are not going to attend your event, then you have no chance of telling Trump what is the right thing and what is the wrong thing. You are telling him you are free to do whatever you want by attaching with the people who you differ with, who you don't agree with, you have a small chance of correcting. If you don't do that, you have zero chance of correcting. So, prophets respecting the otherness of other that he did is an example for us to live by. Let's work with people who we differ with. Mother Teresa said something very profound. She said, if you want to make peace with your enemies, she said, go talk to you. Talking with your friends, don't change the equation. You have to talk with your enemies. So it is important for us to talk with the people who are polarized, who are different than us. Because deep down, all Americans, 322 million of us, all of us want a decent job. We have safe families, safe neighborhoods. None of us, whether we are right, left, or in the middle, we have the same desires. By talking with each other, we can bring those desires and focus on doing what is good for all of us. By rejecting them, we're making a big mistake. I just wanted to share Prophet's example, how we can use in our daily life. Thank you.